Closing song will be Gather the People in your Journey Songbook, number 766. Again, that's in your Journey Songbook, number 766. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Christ and sisters, let us ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You have come to heal the control. Have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead, you are seated. Are, are seated. Seated at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. highest and on earth peace to people of good will <clears throat> glory to, to god in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory lord god heavenly king O oh god almighty father glory to god, god in the highest and on earth, earth be to people of good will lord jesus sins 
of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God. Holy One, the Lord of the Most High, Jesus the Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. book of the prophet Daniel. It shall be a time unsurpassed in distress since nations began until that time. At that time your people shall escape, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever. Others shall be an everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament. Thanks be to God. Our response this morning is, you are my inheritance, O Lord. Secure my lot. I keep the Lord before me always. With Him at my right hand, I shall not be moved. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You are my inheritance, O Lord. So much. 
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every priest stands daily at his ministry, offering frequently those same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But this one offered one sacrifice for sins and took his seat forever at the right hand of God. Now he waits until his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering he has made perfect forever those who are being consecrated. Where there is forgiveness, the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the end of the earth to the end of the sky. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branch becomes tender and sprouts leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the gates. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but why words will not pass away. But of that day or hour, The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters in Christ, oftentimes when we think of that moment of God's judgment, of that time in which we will be called to give account of our lives, we can be scared of what that encounter might look like. Certainly there have been many different, perhaps, ideas of how that judgment will come to pass. And Jesus is telling us for certainty, for sure, that it is something that will come and happen. But how do we then respond to this message? Certainly his apostles and disciples and all those who heard from Jesus' own mouth this revelation, perhaps were still unsure of what that meant for them. When it comes to our relationship with our faith, our God, 
and our relationship with one another. In our society, it can seem like a daunting task as to find out what is our purpose as human beings. Is it to be scientific and explore and understand all that is all around us in the world, in space and in the oceans, to continue to push the limits of human ingenuity through different developments and technologies, to solve perhaps incurable diseases and lengthen the lifespan of our people. Certainly, it is to live a life, but how we live that life is one that is ordered towards relationship with God or towards relationship with myself that defines how we are then going to be judged in the goodness of what we do. When we believe that we have a mission to fulfill, the human race is then perhaps understanding of what that mission is for each one of us, then it is then more difficult for us to understand my purpose. But if we focus on the tenets of the gospel message to be able to be in relationship with God and with the people around us, our neighbors, then we can begin to understand our faith in a more positive manner. Certainly we believe that our faith should not make us slaves, though I believe that sometimes that is the message that is taken away from those who believe that the church or faith believe certain beliefs, to practice certain ideas, or to live your life according to your own will. We are not slaves. We are not slaves. We are called to be in relationship, in friendship, in dialogue. We have each been called to a vocation. A vocation is a gift that enables us to live out that relationship particular to our state of life. Not all are called to monastic life of praying nine times a day, of offering simplicity of life through the meals, through their relationship with their spouses, through the love that they express and care and charity for them, for their children. This vocation is the gift that enables us in relationship to be holy where we are. Not all of us holiness and greatness of charity and love. In the love that I give my brother, my sister, my mom, my dad, there is Christ made, made present. And there am I fulfilling the law of God. If I do these things with those around me where I am, it perhaps may seem uneventful. It is building my relationship with God and my neighbor and I am fulfilling my mission. In this way, I am doing the will of the Father as Jesus has proclaimed. I am doing the will that has given me purpose. And at the same time, if I am able to cure disease, to build up for my family a loving home, to have things that are necessary, then so be it. Because out of that great love, God gives us graces and blessings, and we are able to build a faith that is not a faith based on slavery or oppression, but one out of great choice, the choice to turn and love, forgive, and understand the imperfect nature of the human condition. And in doing this, my brothers and sisters, we are now given the opportunity to receive the kingdom of heaven. For we have been able to prepare for it. 
We cannot go into the kingdom of heaven if we have not toiled and worked to receive it. Not because we are not made worthy, but because we are failed to understand that in heaven, it is a place of relationship directly with God, face to face. His presence is all that fills us. And if it does not begin here on earth in this life, how can we hope to desire it in the eternal life? So we ask the Lord today that when the Son of Man comes, we may be ready, we may be prepared, and we may build the kingdom of heaven in the little things each and every day. So as we prepare for another week, another week of work, another week perhaps of struggling, we ask the Lord to help us overcome temptation, to ask forgiveness if we have failed or if we have made mistakes. No one is perfect. God is love and forgiveness. And we ask the Lord to help our families be united. We are coming close to this time of Thanksgiving. But we should not wait for once a year to acknowledge these things. We are grateful today for the gift of life, for the gift of friendship, of being able to call each other brothers and sisters, to be able to be here to receive the Holy Eucharist, to receive Jesus in His Word and His truth, to be strengthened and renewed. This is an act of thanksgiving. And we ask the Lord with faith filled with humility and trust to be able to go forth from this church assembly to preach that good news wherever it may take us. So we ask everything through intercession of our Blessed Mother. Hearts to the Lord in heaven, to our Father, to the one who made us with great love in his image. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. We gather all of our prayers, and we ask humbly that our Heavenly Father may receive from us our prayers for our people, for our sick, for those who have died, and for our community. May he bring healing and strength to all who turn to him. For the church that, like Jesus himself, the mystical body of Christ, might offer true hope and darkness to all those who suffer by intervening to end persecutions and to offer compassionate care whenever possible. that 
the wise shall shine brightly. People everywhere will prioritize wisdom and justice in order to bring about peaceful solutions to all our current conflicts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that we might have the insight to recognize those who are most in need so that we can provide the concrete assistance that will move them from the darkness of despair into the light of hope. Maya Camilla Hernandez, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those listed in our parish bulletin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Mary Morvey, Darwin de Grave, that they may awake to live forever, shining with the splendor of the fir firmament in their new life with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions for which this Mass is offered. Hazel Kozinski, 10th anniversary. George Jagunik. John Kusera. Mary Olson. Tom and Chris Blazik, 50th wedding anniversary. Vincent Mazzola. Michael Zobel. Patricia Crane, Dominic Sinesi, Donald Chrisman, Helen McCormick, Dorothy Greco, Pudlow, Deacon Dennis Colgan, Diana Simpano, Anna and Roman Romanchik, Robert Pinto, 10th anniversary. Miguel and June Duran, 30th wedding anniversary. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come to the altar of sacrifice, hear the prayers we have offered through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, the saints, the martyrs, and all those whose faith shines the light in guiding us towards Christ as we ask everything in his name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
here, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accepts the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Wherefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise Supich, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let us share some sign of peace with one another. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Amen. For those that are participating at our master via live stream or who cannot receive communion today, please ask that you close your eyes and bow your heads as I read the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please join us in our communion hymn, which can be found in your gather book, number 275. I has not seen. Again, in your gather book, number 275. I has not seen.
Let us pray. We have partaking of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our announcements. Join us for an evening of reflection and renewal on Monday evening, November 15th at 7 p.m. at St. Cyprian's <coughs> Church. Help the Women's Club help others by donating toiletries and other items for the night ministry. See the bulletin for more information. The Women's Club will meet Thursday evening, November 18th at 7 p.m. in the Annex. New members are welcomed. This month, we'll learn how to create centerpieces for your holiday table. And finally, save the date. The seniors of our parish are invited to join Commander Mick Kamisic on Tuesday, e Tuesday afternoon, November 30th at 1.15 p.m. in the Annex for a presentation on internet safety. There will be refreshments and a few songs sung by our students to get everyone in the Christmas spirit. Thank you very much. As, as always, we continue to encourage everyone to come back uh, in presence, uh, in, in corporal presence to our Mass. Thank you so much for joining us and supporting our community of faith with your prayers. And your presence is always welcome here at church. To those who join us live through the live stream, thank you for joining our parish community in this time of prayer. As we look forward to the coming of Advent, we continue to uh, reach out to our community members for uh, different opportunities for prayer, renewal, and faith. And so this Monday, as we said, for a renewal of faith in their ministries, we invite all current ministers, lectors, Eucharistic ministers, uh, ushers, or ministers of welcoming to come, or those who desire to join this ministry uh, to come as well. So we look forward to seeing many faces this coming Monday. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Please join us in our closing hymn, which can be found in your journey songbook, number 475, or, sorry, 574, Glory and Praise to Our God. Again, that's your journey songbook, number 574. in his ways. 